Hey friends, welcome back to the vlog. This is an exotic study with me video where I was skiing in the French Alps with my friends before all of this social isolation lockdown stuff. And because I'm a massive nerd, I decided to spend one of the evenings studying rather than socializing. Anyway, the day starts at 7 a.m. when I wake up in our fancy ass chalet and lie in bed doing absolutely nothing. At 7.30, I decide to stop being a waste man and head downstairs to grab breakfast with the gang. We get a great breakfast courtesy of our wonderful chef Anna, and then at 8.30, we head downstairs, I struggle to put my boots on, and we take the bus over to Maribel Center in the Three Valley Ski Resort. From 9.15 to 12.15, me and my friends Ayushi and Jason have a private lesson with ski instructor Rupert. After the ski lesson at 12.30, we head over to Monterey, a smaller village area thing, where we chill on the deck chairs and grab a cheeky chocolat show. All right, mate, we got ourselves some cheeky chocolat shows. Uh. Ow. I just put it on my top, that's bad. We meet up with the rest of the gang and have lunch at Mountain Burger. And then at 2.30 p.m. I ski back to Maribel Center, get rid of my skis, get out of my boots and breathe a sigh of ecstasy as my feet stop hurting for the first time in four hours. I think about going back to the chalet to start doing some work, but I had a nasty fall yesterday and my shoulder really hurts. So I head into a nearby spa for a cheeky sports massage. I chill in the spa until 4.30 p.m. I wanted to film this, but there were lots of other half naked people there and I thought it would have been a bit weird. Afterwards, I happen to run into the rest of the gang. We catch the bus home and we end up back at the chalet at 5 p.m. At 10 past five, I bust out the laptop, pour myself some apple juice to relax, and join the hashtag squad having cake on the dining table. Everyone's chilling and chatting, but for the sake of studying and for the sake of this hashtag content, I decide to be really antisocial and I start doing some work. First, I download the new version of Anki. I load up my Spotify study with me playlist that you'll find linked in the video description uh, onto the smart speaker in the chalet. And I end up procrastinating for 40 minutes by chatting with the crew about the coronavirus and making some tea for everyone. At 5.50, I finally sit down to do something productive and decide that it's about time I start preparing for the USMLE, a medical exam that's taken by US medical students. I'm toying with the idea of maybe applying to the US for residency, so I thought I'd see what this exam's all about. After then procrastinating for another whole hour by chatting to my mate Rohan, I finally dig out the USMLE first aid textbook PDF at 6.50 p.m. I start by going through the most important page of any textbook, and that's the table of contents. And as I'm doing that, I set up my retrospective revision timetable in Notion. I create a table with the main topics in one column, and the idea is that when I've studied a topic for the first time, I'll add today's date in the second column, and then when I've studied it for a second time, the date will go in the third column, and I'll color code it, and to be honest, I've got a whole video explaining this process in depth that'll be linked in the video description if you fancy checking it out. After making a list of the subjects in the textbook, I start by flicking through the first few chapters to check out whether any of this stuff is new, or if it'll be mostly a case of reactivating knowledge. Luckily, it seems like mostly it's stuff that I once knew that I'll just have to relearn, which doesn't seem too bad. And as I'm going through, I'm creating toggles in Notion for the main topic so that when I actually come to study these subjects, I'll immediately have a big picture understanding of what's going on. And as I'm going through, I'm finding appropriate emojis to represent each subject, which makes me feel happy inside. After doing this for around 15 minutes, it's 7.05 p.m. and I decide to actually make a start on gastrointestinal medicine. I quite enjoyed scrolling through the textbook and seeing what topics would come up but it's a pretty mindless activity that doesn't actually use any brain power, so I try to avoid doing too much of it in one go. I start by doing some hunting around on the internet for a pre-made Anki deck. This is one of the great things about medicine, that there are hundreds of revision resources already available on the internet, so in a way, there's very little point in us making our own notes. I turn to the USMLE Step 1 subreddit as the ultimate source of all knowledge, and they point me to a few Anki decks that I sent to download through our pretty slow Wi-Fi in the French Alps. Incidentally, I actually learned how to play the piano and the guitar by following the recommendations of the Learn Piano and Learn Guitar subreddits. So now, whenever I need to learn anything new, I just turn to the appropriate subreddit for that topic and I'm never disappointed. By 7.15, once I've started downloading the Hoopla Anki deck, I continue going through the textbook PDF thing, I start by making a list of all the hormones within gastrointestinal medicine, and then I make a quick list of all the pathology topics within the subject. This is again, scoping the subject in action, i.e. before starting to actually drill down into the details of any one subject, I need to have some sort of an overview of what's actually in that subject so that I don't lose the forest from the trees. 
I've got much more information about this in my Skillshare class about how to study for exams, which you can check out if you like. Anyway, as I'm going through the book and writing down the different diseases that can afflict someone within gastrointestinal medicine, I categorize them into different areas of the body. The book sort of has them in this order, but it doesn't explicitly categorize them. And I find that whenever I'm learning anything, if I can form some sort of categorization process, then it makes the learning process much more efficient. For example, now in my head and in Notion, I appreciate that there are only 11 conditions that can happen to the esophagus and only really four that can happen to the stomach. And that's easier to form a mental model in my head than by recognizing that there are 87 conditions in all of GI medicine, which is really quite hard to keep up with. By 7.35, the Anki decks downloaded and so I import it into my Anki account. It's pretty huge, but I'm only gonna focus on GI medicine today. Having scoped the subject for it, I think about trying to sync it over to my iPhone, but the 600 megabytes worth of data is gonna take a few hours to sync over our very slow Wi-Fi. So I decide to wait until I get back home with decent internet speed before trying to upload it to Anki Web. From 7.35 to 8 p.m., we faff around trying to order some pizza delivery because this is the one day that week that we don't have our personal chef in the chalet. We try and figure out who can speak the best French and exactly how to order pizza for home delivery in French. But then when we ring up the company, we find that A, they can all speak English anyway, and B, they don't even deliver to our place. From 8 p.m., while the others are still trying to figure out the logistics of food delivery, I make a start on the Hoopla Anki deck for gastrointestinal medicine. I realize pretty quickly that this won't work because the way that the Anki deck is organized, it means I'm seeing information in isolation, which is an absolutely terrible way to learn because it's relying on memorization rather than understanding. Having identified this within the first few minutes, I decide to change up my strategy and actually read from the textbook. So for the next half an hour, I read through the different diseases in the book. And if there's anything I don't immediately understand or that's new to me or that I want more information about, I do a cheeky Google and find the Wikipedia article for that disease. If anyone's going to comment about how Wikipedia is terrible, you're clearly behind the times. Literally every medical student and doctor I know uses Wikipedia extensively several times a day. It's amazing that we've got this incredible resource available for free. I've also talked in the past and in my Skillshare class about how note-taking is a balance between compression and context. The notes in the first aid book are great, but they're very, very compressed, which means there's no context to the information. But the great thing about the internet is that if we need it, the context is just a Google search away. Therefore, there's not much point in me actively spending the time to take notes about these conditions because I know that all the notes I need will always be on Wikipedia whenever I need them. By 8.30 p.m., I begin to lose concentration and start to feel a wave of tiredness from the ski lesson that morning that was absolutely knackering. Turns out our group of six doctors and two dentists didn't quite manage to figure out the logistics of ordering food in France. So our boy Jason ends up cooking up some stuff in the kitchen with the limited ingredients that we have in the chalet. He makes a French toast toasty with cheese, onions, and mushrooms, and it's the best tasting toasty I've ever had in my life. Jason is amazing. While we're eating, we do a casual articulate practice session with everyone taking turns to describe to the rest of the group what's on the cards. We realize that we don't know many people in the person section, and so we Google those as we go along so that we can all learn from the game. At 10 past nine, I spend some time working through an online course on Brilliant, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. I'm continuing the introduction to neural network series that's teaching me about computer vision, which is something I've been interested in for quite some time, especially because everyone talks about how machine learning and neural networks are being used in medicine to interpret investigations like x-rays, CT scans, and ECGs. Brilliant's course gives a great accessible introduction to the topic, and I find myself wishing that more medical school resources had the clarity and the engagement that the Brilliant courses do. In fact, if I'm ever in a productivity slump like today, I find that doing one of Brilliant's daily challenges helps reboot my brain and gives me that second wind of energy that I sometimes need. If you'd like to check out their incredible maths, science, and computer science courses, there is no time like the present, head over to brilliant.org forward slash Ali and the first 200 people to use that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. At 9.40, I spend 10 minutes joining the others in cleaning up the kitchen, putting stuff in the dishwasher and washing some dishes to make sure the chalet is in a decent state. And then at 9.53, I head up to the bedroom, intending to do one final burst of work before heading up to bed. I open up Anki on my MacBook and start working through flashcards on the topics that I've studied today as a form of active recall. But then by 10 past 10, I find my eyes beginning to shut, so I decide that that's probably enough work for one day. So I close the laptop, set all the various devices to charge, brush my teeth, change into my scrub bottoms that I use as pajamas, and crawl into bed. Because I'm on holiday, I give myself permission to spend some time wasting time on my phone before bed, which is normally something that's completely forbidden as part of my productivity philosophy. And then after mindlessly scrolling Instagram for a bit, I call it a night. 
I really hope you learned something from this video. And do please remember to sign up to Brilliant by using the link in the video description to help support the channel. If you like this video, here is a playlist of some of my most popular study-themed videos. Stay safe and good night.